We're back. This is Dear Woke Christian, the podcast. My name is Jason. This open letter format podcast, this is directed to those persons who profess to be woke or embrace critical race theory or believe in social justice. My hope and my prayer is that you'll consider what God's word actually says and that you'll compare that to anything that you've been told, bought, or maybe even sold. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't line up with what God's word says, that you'll reject it. Today, I'm, uh, as you see, my studio has uh, taken off significantly. So um, because of what I'm going to be talking about is a little bit different than what I usually talk about, I am going to take the time to address a situation that's come up in the past couple, in the last week or so, and um, discuss where I'm at in regards to this. So I'll explain in a moment. So if you've been anywhere in the world, in the, in the uh hip-hop community, the Christian hip-hop community, you've heard that the artist formerly known as the Fanatic, Christian artist, has uh, renounced his faith. And so I wanted to kind of give my perspective, if you will, on what happened with him. Some of my takeaways from his video where he expresses his, um, his renunciation of his faith and maybe give my perspective. I'm not going to do a deep dive into his video because I believe that there have been much better um, reactions to that video by K-Dub and Kurt Kennedy, by other people who have addressed that. And so I will put some descriptions to some videos that I found fruitful that maybe you might want to look, look at. But I do want to address this, what tends to happen when somebody renounces the faith. So if you would, just give me a second. I'm going to jump and share my screen. So I've uh, put my notes here and I've called it the uh, fantastic fanatic fallout. And today I just want to just take a few seconds, to, not a few seconds, maybe a few, more than a few seconds, just to go over some of the things that I got from his video. So first thing, let's just take a second. We're going to look at some of the things that I got from his video where he acknowledges that he's renouncing his faith. So the first question I kind of want to point out is, who is the fanatic? So he used to be a member of the Christian hip hop group Cross Movement. They were definitely pioneers in the Christian rap game. They not only had great lyrical creativity and so forth like that, but they had sound biblical doctrine. And what, I mean, they introduced reformed theology out to the mainstream. So if you can imagine, a reformed pastor or a reformed teacher, but he is performing or giving or, or preaching, if you will, using rap. So, I mean, they were definitely high on the list for a lot of good reasons, and they blazed a trail for many Christian artists for today. So um, that's it. Next, um, we have to remember something that we know is that he is a soul. He is a human, that a human that needs a savior. And at this current moment, unless God, the Holy Spirit, regenerates his heart, he is professing that he's rejecting that salvation. He's rejecting the only one who could, in fact, provide him salvation. Um, next, I got from his video is that he's putting out a book. And he, to me, it seemed like his video was really geared toward letting people know that Hey, there's a book coming. There's a book coming. You want to read the book, blah, 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 which I, I guess could be useful. I just did not see why it was necessary to tie the book to it. But again, somebody said apostasy sells. And so at this current moment, he is he, he, he's going to be putting out a book. And is, I guess it's going to answer a lot of the other questions that um, we'll have later on in here. Something else that I noticed here is this is what happens when you unhitch yourself from scripture, reading church and fellowship of believers. And it really brought, I really thought about Isha and Burgundy, how he and his wife talked about how they weren't in church for like five years. And he mentioned that he was struggling with his faith for like five, seven years. And he hadn't read, I think he said, I feel like he said he had not read the scriptures himself for like five years. And to me, that's a that's a sad state to be in. It's a terrible place to be.
to be in it. We'll actually look at the scriptures as it relates to that. But so I glean from here, like this is what happens when we are not reading God's word. When we're not replenishing our, bringing our questions and, and, and the such to God's word, but not letting our questions and doubts rule over God's word, which seems to be a big contrast to what he did. And it leads me to the next um, point. Five to seven years after seminary, post-seminary, eroded his faith he talked about. And he was, um, I believe that he's basically a, a liberal or a progressive in this regard, because he mentions how he did not want to continue in um, being a Christian artist that was liberal or that was leaning in this direction. So to me, I believe he's he's basically become a liberal or progressive. So the five to six years of post-seminary where he wasn't reading his word, he mentioned that he was in a discipleship group or an accountability group. And that really causes me to shudder. Like, I don't know how, what happened. I would, I would love to hear the side of these gentlemen in a group that he was in. Like, what happened, man, that this guy was in your care and this happened? I'm not fronting on them because it is ultimately um, Brady's responsibility to come forth and say, this is where I'm at. But, man, that's gotta feel, they, they've got to feel some kind of way to know that they were right there with him and did not know that he was going through this type of um, – deconstruction if you will all right now this is something else to consider and this is something that we know he is now an outsider he's not a friend of the cross he's not a friend of the faith and i know he wanted to he positioned himself like oh i'm, I'm thinking intellectually he said he was intellectually honest now i don't think that that's true i don't believe that um he kind of uh ran up the, uh, you know, the, hey, you can come talk to me because I'm going to tell you how it is type of flag toward the end of his video. I'm sorry. He's no longer a brother in Christ. I, I can't come to him for sound biblical discussion. If it, I mean, again, you he was in the rap game for 30 years. He mentions that he, he was a defender of the faith for 30 years. And I agree that he was in the faith for 30 years. However, he left from it. He's no longer an insider. You can't go to him. So even with the, the push for his book, you can't go to his book and expect to get sound biblical thought because at the end of the day, you've left the faith. Something else I picked up from this is that scriptures have to remain central, though they're not a part of the Trinity. But we have to have them to know the Trinity. So yes, we do worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, we are saved by grace through faith in Christ. However, we don't know that apart from the scriptures. So we can't take God's general revelation and put that over God's special revelation in his word. So it almost seemed like, from my understanding, is that he went backwards. He started with God's general revelation that led him to God's special revelation, but he had questions and, and ran into some speed bumps. So then he's leaving God's special revelation to pursue God's general revelation. And the last thing that I picked up just for me, things that I know, he left a lot more questions than he ans than answers. There were a lot of questions that he didn't mention. There was a lot of questions he alluded to in his video that he didn't explain. Like, what is it that caused you to doubt, to question? He talks a lot about um, contradictions or questions or doubts, whatever, in the scriptures. And we can all have questions. There's, there's no way we're going to understand everything in scripture. There's no way. However, he made his doubts judge over the scriptures, whereas the scriptures should judge his doubts. Because again, a backwards approach to it. And that was just some things that I picked up from it. What we don't know. Here's some things that we don't know. Let's fix my little page there. All right. What we don't know. I don't know. Somebody might say, well, was he ever really saved? And can he be restored? Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know. I do believe that God, the Holy Spirit, could restore anybody as long as they're alive. I believe that God can restore them and or save them, if you will. So that's something, but I don't know that. It's, that is all in the Lord's hands. Something else I don't know is what were the questions that he had that caused him to doubt and therefore turn from his from the faith. He doesn't even meant, he doesn't tell you what those were, and that's what caused me to think that the video was more like a a run up to his book because I'm pretty sure sometime before his book comes out, he's gonna put out a video that maybe alludes even more to the doubts that he had, but still maybe doesn't give him full full answers. Maybe he does. I don't know, but. Um, I don't, I don't know. So he didn't really say like, I doubt that Adam and Eve really existed, or I don't believe in whatever anymore. He didn't give you concrete things that you could really answer. And that's what it is. I mean, there's a, it, I'm pretty sure that if he had given the, the real issues, like these are the six things that caused me to turn on my faith, there would be videos left and right and center that explain those and his book would be unnecessary. But if he doesn't answer those, and he doesn't give you those questions, he just leaves them in his book, then maybe a hundred, a thousand, however many more people will buy the book to find out what the questions are. Um, what really caused him to stand, what really caused him to stand in judgment of God's word? I just don't understand. I don't understand how he mentions, and it was kind of like a, a, a big moment in the video where he said, God, if I, if I see one more contradiction in here and, and it's going to make me lose my faith, what, what, what made you think that you can actually, like God is beholden to you like that. I, I mean, it, God, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me that I, he couldn't have. So like what made him think that he could, because again, like, I mean, he was already, there's no way I would say that. Like, if you do this one more thing, I'm going to X, Y, Z. At that point, you're already kind of gone too far at that point. If you say that to your wife, if you do this one more time, I'm going to leave. Or tell your kids, you're already kind of already there at that point. So what made him think he could pull that card with God? It was very troubling. Something else I don't know. Like, what is his worldview based on now? If his worldview at one point was based on the Christian scriptures, what is it based on now? Because he says some rather confusing things about three quarters of the way through the video talks about how he still loves the gospel and he, he loves Christ. And like, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean you love the gospel? Like, what does that mean? But you don't believe it? Like, I, I don't understand how you can mentally assent to the scriptures without I'm sorry, mentally assent to the gospel without surrendering to it. I don't, I don't get it, but you know, uh, not sure if as of today, if social and racial issues played a role in his deconstruction or his, his, his renunciation of faith. Um, I've watched a couple interviews and a lot of people are alluding that there was some social justice, <coughs> racial issues critical race theory issues that played a part in this. I, I don't know that emphatically. He has not said that, so I want to give him the benefit if it wasn't. But he kind of alluded to it even in the video as well. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it does come out that it was some, some Wakanda type of situation. So here we go. What do we do now? And this is just somewhere like I have to admit, I, I am kind of kind of torn in this regard. So these are things that I'm struggling with, things that I'm dealing with. I enjoy Christian hip hop and I enjoy that genre of reformed Christian hip hop. Um, I have a huge playlist of reform Christian rap and the fanatic is on several of those um albums so i'm kind of torn like do i purge them all do i purge the people that performed with him do i just play them and just keep them to myself um because something else you have to think about 
a lot of their music, man, was catechismic. I mean, they were giving you sound theology in a in a a, a fun hip hop type of way, but they were giving you sound doctrine. So I, I admit, and you can comment down below. Do you keep it or do you purge it? Purge it or play it? I don't know. I really don't. Uh, what else? Something else I need to do. Read. Um, I need to read God's word more. I know I, I, I do this channel. I do these videos. I do read. I have a pretty good reading regimen. It's, it's not enough. It's not enough. I, I, if I allow myself to get, I mean, I could, this gentleman, again, he's been to Bible college at seminaries, performed all around the world, um, ministering the gospel to people and he could get swept under. I can't trust myself and I could get swept under. Um, but also with that, do you read his book? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think there was a reason to. I mean, when it comes out, I guess everybody will make a decision. I know a lot of people are probably going to pick it up to understand where he is if they don't already understand. But, um, and speaking of that, let's look at the scriptures because this is something I wanted to point out. And this is John chapter 6. Jesus, um, Jesus was doing the great, uh, he was growing his ministry through subtraction. And this is John chapter uh, 6, verse 60. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there is some, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he said, and he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the father. After this, his, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Verse 67. So Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away as well? And here's good old Simon Peter. I love Simon Peter. Simon Peter answered to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered, did I choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. So, the reason I brought that up is because, notice, some of the disciples, and I use the disciples loosely, some of those people that were following Jesus, when Jesus gave them a hard teaching, they said, man, we don't know what to do with this. So they left him. But the twelve, or really the eleven, decided to stay with Christ and they knew that he was and they said Lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life they knew that Christ that Christ's words were eternal life so they knew that there was an eternal life out there so even though what Jesus said because notice they didn't say that they understood everything and we know they didn't because once Jesus was crucified they all scattered like ants so we know that they did not get everything. They did not fully understand, but they knew where not to go. They said, out there in that world, that's not eternal life. If we stay with you, Christ, that is eternal life. And we have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. So they knew, like, even though it's hard to understand what you're saying, you're talking about you're going to be crucified and this, that, and other, but we know that you are the Holy One of God. And so going back, to the fantastic fanatic fallout, I just want to make sure that I am staying read up in his word so that I don't leave eternal life. I mean, imagine leaving eternal life to go back to death. Like imagine that you were dead at one point, you came alive or you were, you thought you were alive or you were 
you know, thinking about being alive because you wanted to be around this intellectually around Christ. And then you decide, yeah, now nah, I'm gonna go back to my grave clothes. I'm gonna go back, get back in the grave. I'm gonna go back into the tomb. Wow. Next thing that I think we should all do is we should pray. We should pray, first of all, that we ourselves will not be deceived, that our families will not be deceived, that those are our loved ones in our churches and our congregation will not be deceived. And we should also pray for Brady. I mean, this gentleman, again, is turning his back on eternal life. I mean, that's that's saddening. That should cause every one of us to pause and to think like, wow, that could be me. That could be somebody I know. I could be watching my son or daughter or, or whomever go through this. What, what, what would I do? All right. And trying to do a little bit of pun here at the end collab or solo and what i mean by that is cross movement uh, all of those gentlemen worked together to collaborate to do projects and some of them left and did solo projects so what i'm thinking here i want to point out is the benefit and the importance of working together because at the end of the day you will ultimately stand before god as an individual yes i will stand before god and give an account for what i did okay now, who I worked with and who I collaborated with, they will individually stand before God as well. That being the case, though, working together with individuals and doing this Christian life together does have a benefit in that you're not doing it alone. And you're not going to. The likelihood is that you would not be swept under and drug away because you're with somebody because you're like that, that three, four, cold, three fold cord that's not easily cut so i would say that there's there's value in collaboration there's value in accountability there's value in church community and being around other believers and there is value also in recognizing that i am accountable to god myself so at the end of the day even if my whole squad goes another direction i know that i have to remain faithful but on the same note if I'm, a, if I'm running amok, I should be looking to my squad to help me, bring me back into the fold and answer my questions and pray with me and such like that. I don't know what Brady's um, accountability group was like, what they were doing, what they talked about, any of that stuff. And I'm not even remotely trying to disparage them because I don't know what they're doing. I'm sure that they're probably heartbroken to watch and to hear someone that they did life with apostatize and turn his back on Christ. Um, that is, you know, that's, that's pretty sad to think about. So I can only imagine what they're going through. All I'm saying is that we have to have both. We, we are accountable to God, but we need to also be in community and groups so we can one another with one another, one another with one another, um, and encourage one another as we see the day approaching. So this is just some of my takeaways from, um, what I call the fantastic fanatic fallout. Um, pray for that man. Pray for him. Because I can only imagine what he's going through. His family, I, I, I'm assuming he's probably married, has kids, but he's he's been an influence in the Christian rap game for decades. And now he's turning his back on his faith. And we just have to pray that God will, of course, grant him forgiveness. That he will be open to correction and, and reaching out and praying that other people that have worked with him that know him are reaching out to him and, and are trying to encourage him and answer his questions but at the end of the day it's going to be god the holy spirit that makes the the significant change so that was my takeaway from the fanatic um turning turning it away from the christian faith and i just ask you all to pray for him to um encourage one another if, if you see some brother or sister in a similar situation in your neck of the woods or in your um, circle, pray for them and encourage them to get back into God's word. Don't go month upon month and year upon year, not in God's word, not in the fellowship of the believers, not taking communion and, and um, experiencing the, the joys of being in communion and fellowship with other believers. It's rough, but we got to keep praying. This is Dear Will Christian, the podcast. 
This open letter format podcast is meant to encourage you to see the beauty and the wonder and the sufficiency of God's word. I want you to compare everything that you've been told against God's word and reject anything that does not line up with God's word and does not make much of Christ. I want to thank you very much for the three piece special plus a comment. Thank you for liking this video, for sharing this video, for subscribing. If you're not already a subscriber and hitting the bell icon and leave me a comment down below. Um, if you were a follower of the fanatic, you know, Hey, what was your favorite track? Um, also, what are you going to do with his music? What do you do with music from somebody whom was solid at one point and now is no longer? What do you do with that music? Do you purge it? Do you play it? Do you keep it to yourself? What do you do? I'd love to know because truly I don't have an answer and I would love to hear what you think. So as I like to say in the meantime and in between time and God willing until next time, grace and peace.